Your marketing and specifically your social media is like a bank. Every time you create content, you're either creating a deposit or you're making a withdrawal. We're going to call it the bank of social capital because you're creating capital with your audience. Now, when you give your audience what they came for, you're creating a deposit. You're depositing into the bank of social capital. And when you make an offer to your audience, whether you ask them to do something or tell them about something they could purchase from you, or maybe you just straight up make an offer to them, you're creating a withdrawal. Both deposits and withdrawals are great within your bank of social capital, but we have to keep our accounts in good standing. So we have to balance these things out. So today I'm going to talk to you about some simple social media tactics and strategies in order to keep your account in good standing. Y'all, we are going to cover so much today. I have so many gold nuggets for you in this episode. So I want to make sure that you're ready to take notes, get your journal out, get ready to take notes and really be listening in hard because 80% of what I teach my clients about social media is actually going to be contained in this document. I'm not going to give you any scripts or templates, but there is so much good stuff here. And if you are listening and using your critical thinking to think about your specific offer and your specific audience, you are really going to come away with some serious gold. So be ready and just know that you are getting a lot here. Of course, there is more to learn, but each strategy Each strategy I'm going to teach you here has lots of tactics behind it, but this information here is going to get you further than your competitors. I'm Kelly Coulter. In 2020, I became absolutely obsessed with helping fitness professionals build their businesses so they could serve their clients during the pandemic. Now I help coaches just like you make more impact with your perfect clients without adding hours to your day by leveraging the life-changing work you're already doing. These episodes are specifically designed to deliver mindset, business, and direct response marketing tips that will truly move the needle on your business. Ready to get started? Let's go. So before we get into the meat of the show, I want to bring on one of my current accelerators just to talk about her experience because she is doing some really exciting things and she's really made so much progress, both financially impact wise, as well as personally mindset and um, just personal growth. So with that, Rosetta Martinez from Aruba. Hello, my friend. Hi, Kelly. (laughs) Thank you for doing this. Yes, no problem. Always uh, here to to help out. (laughs) Oh, thank you. So let's start off. We're going to make this super quick, just a little five minute interview. Tell me where you were when you first joined the accelerator. Well, uh, when I started, I was like a bit stuck in um, growing my business. So I Mm -hmm. uh, was doing everything classes, normal monthly classes, Um, started also with a program, but I was like stuck in um, growing my group, growing the amount of clients for my program. So um, at that moment, I, uh, I started with, uh, with Kelly. Um, it got me a lot of uh, new ideas, especially on the mindset, as I'm a, a person that I, I am not afraid to talk to people, you know, to promote myself and everything. But the part of mindset for me is important because even though we are the coach, we coach people, we also need that, you know, support and to keep us accountable for everything that we do. And oh, so true. That, is, that has helped me a lot. So true. So, and if you don't mind, I'll make an observation. You have become somebody who stands up for yourself in such profound ways. Um, whereas before you stood up for yourself, but now you're just so much more clear headed. It's just amazing to watch. You're like blossoming. Yes, 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 definitely, definitely. (laughs) So one of the first things we did is we put together your core revenue generation program and you right away started onboarding people into that program and that's gone really well for you, correct? Yes, yes, it has gone very well. I've uh, upgraded um, the the way that I 
I present the program. I've um, touch base on really focusing on the, the results of my clients. And the way that I promote it now is not just promoting a program, but it's mostly promoting what their results will be because now I have like a proof of the people that were doing the program before, how they have transformed. And that is what is helping me to get newer clients. And um, I'm focusing also on the type of clients that are perfect for the program and not that it's something for everybody. So that has worked a lot. Yeah. That is such a profound shift. Congratulations mm-hmm. on that, because that's not something that everybody gets, but um, sometimes we get tripped up in our heads about the fact that we're reaching out and we're hearing no's instead of saying, okay, I'm just going to keep on going because I need to be talking to the right people. And that person wasn't the right person. So mm-hmm. I, I love that you've made that mindset shift. That is huge for you. Yes. Beautiful. Okay. Like I said, we were going to keep it sweet and short. (laughs) I wanted for people to hear from a real client. I wanted to hear kind of wanted them to hear what you've gotten out of it. Favorite part about being in the program. Well, the, uh, the amazing ideas that you get, and it's not only my journey, but it's a support group that we sit together like once to twice a week that we can share our doubts, our fears. And, um, and you notice that you're not the only one into this uh, into this business and the experiences that you are um, experiencing because um, together we can you know learn from each other and that makes us better and we can also share what has worked for us and um, apply new things to our businesses so uh, um, the accelerator really um, helped me and uh, I, I know that if you participate, if you um, join this group, it's going to make your business even blossom more than it is already. I want you to envision a bonfire. You've got people coming from all over the place to be there. And once they get there, they get warm as they get closer to the fire. Now stay with me because this metaphor is going to help you understand how and what to post on social media. Take out your notebook and draw a little red circle right in the middle of the page. Hint, we're going to draw bigger circles around it, so make sure you leave room. This little circle in the center is red, so if you've got colored pencils or anything with you, go ahead and color it red. This represents your bonfire and the people directly around it who are getting warm. Then draw another circle and you're going to make this circle orange. It's going to go around your red circle. So it's going to be coming right around the outside of the red circle. That circle is orange. Then there's another circle around the orange circle. That one is yellow. And then the one around the very outside is blue. Blue is the coldest. So The people who show up to hear what you have to say via social media inhabit one of those colored circles, either red, orange, yellow, or blue. And I'm going to tell you about each of these different colors and the temperature that they represent and the social media content that each of these colors and warmth levels needs from you. So your blue people, they're the coldest. They're the ones on the outside. They kind of just showed up to the bonfire. They're the outer rim. They are not feeling the warmth from your bonfire yet. They're not feeling your heat. They're not smelling the hot dogs cooking or the marshmallows (laughs) that you're roasting. I I hate marshmallows, (laughs) y'all. So... Trying to tell these people to do something, to trying to ask them to purchase from you or trying to get them to do any specific thing would be like running out to them while they're still in their cars in the parking lot and trying to offer them like a raw hot dog. It would be like super weird and off-putting. People in the blue circle are just starting to get to know you. They just got there. They are there to look around and see what you're all about. The highest level of service that you could offer someone who is in your blue circle is like a light blanket. (laughs) running out to their car while they're still cold, while they're still 
walking toward the bonfire and offering them a little warm blanket. It's your job to deliver some valuable content and position yourself as the expert while drawing in their affinity and getting getting them warm to you. They are not ready for anything deeper yet. Now, as you move closer in toward the center, the next circle that you drew on your page is yellow. These people have warmed up a little. They're not blue anymore. This represents the people who have shown up and moved a little closer. Now they're getting warmer. The yellow circle is smaller than the blue circle because not everyone from the blue circle is going to make it to the yellow circle. And that's a good thing. Now I'm going to give you a little metaphor within a metaphor here. I sometimes like to think about the people who are warming up and starting to think about allowing us to support them in their journeys as people who are wading through the river of misery. And I didn't make this metaphor up. This is something that life coach trainer Stacey Beeman talks about a lot. They are wading through the river of misery. So they've got their feet on the ground and they are in the water. The river of misery is like when they have a problem, they have lack of energy or they're not sleeping or they, um, they want to start an exercise practice and they don't know how, and they need accountability and they want to lose weight. It's these people who have a problem and they're trying to solve it on their own, or they're trying to do all these other things. So maybe they've tried other coaches. Maybe they've tried joining a gym. Maybe they've been working out at home, but they haven't been consistent. They are just kind of wading through the river of misery. They haven't really started to swim. They're not doing the sink or swim thing. They're not really taking the big risks and making the big things happen. People invest in a solution when they have waded through the misery so long that they're ready to pick up their feet and sink or swim. Picking up your feet in the middle of a river is scary, and not everyone will do it. Not everyone gets to the point of where they've waded through the misery long enough. So our yellow people are wading through the river of misery, and it's our job to let them know that we, you as a coach, are the person that can help them get across to the other side. They just have to pick up their feet and trust you. So the yellow people are the people that we can start to segment out within our social media because we see that they might be moving toward being ready to make a purchase or make a big change in their lives. All right, so that's your yellow people. Now your next circle is orange. People in the orange circle have shown you that they're interested. They are engaging at a higher level with your content. If your yellow people may have liked a comment or liked a post, maybe shared something that you have created, your orange people are actively commenting and they may even direct message you with questions. So they're engaging with you at a higher level. They're really showing that they're smelling what you're cooking. These are the people who are ready to have a conversation with you. And your red people, so the last circle, the innermost circle, the smallest circle, these are your hot people. These are the only people that you can really make an offer to effectively. You can offer them a marshmallow because they are in the position to walk over to the fire and roast it. These are people who have come into a conversation with you and they're ready for you to make an offer to them. So now you understand the temperature and the structure of your audience, especially on social media. Your blue people are there for a quick win. Your yellow people are showing you that they are wading through the river of misery currently, and they'll give you signals. Your orange people are the people who are starting to engage in conversation. And your red people are the people who are actively having a conversation with you and are showing you that they are ready for you to make an offer to them. Most of your social media content is going to serve your yellow and blue people. You can make or allude to an offer every once in a while and let them know that you've got something to offer. You don't want people to think that you're out there just creating social media content for free, but you just want to remember that every time you create a post about your offer anytime you make an offer or ask them to do anything 
on social media, you're creating a withdrawal from your bank of social capital. All right. So enough with the analogies. <laughs> I think we've had three major analogies already at this point in the show. I want to talk about the first strategy. I want you to stop posting about your offer, especially if you have a high ticket offer. Offers are for red zone people. The whole purpose of your social media is to move the right people from blue to yellow to orange to red. You want to warm up the right people and let the other people stay in your audience or see their way out. Either is fine. But we don't want to make offers to anyone except the people who are ready and who we have deemed we want to work with. So yes, if you're teaching or leading workouts or doing sessions on an ongoing basis and you just kind of sell per session or you're looking to register lots of people into an event, then yes, you want to let them know what your schedule is. That's not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about making an offer. But a lot of times with my clients and with other coaches, I see people that have these large high ticket transformational programs that they're offering. Let me give an example of what a, a high ticket program would be. Something like, um, work with me for six months and I'm going to help you lose 30 pounds or um, uh, I'm going to help people get out of pain. I'm going to help people navigate hormone fluctuations as they go through menopause. It's these programs that we teach because we are professional, knowledgeable coaches and we know how to help people through these big life changes. That's a transformational program. So when I say stop posting your offer, I'm telling you that social media is not the place where someone is going to purchase a high ticket transformational offer. Now, I know that sounds counterintuitive. What I see a lot of times is people will build their entire social media presence around posting the details of the offer. Your blue people are just not ready to hear about that yet. They don't even know if they trust you yet, and they haven't shown you that they're wading through the river of misery yet. So making an offer is ineffective, and it creates a withdrawal from your bank of social capital. All right, so the second strategy is this. I want you to be super intentional about what you're doing in social media. You need to be adding value for the right people. A lot of times I'll talk to my clients and we'll be talking about what they want from their business and where they are, and they don't feel like they've gotten to where they want to be. And they'll just say, I just need a bigger audience. The truth is, there are influencers out there right now who have millions of people in their audience, 1 million, 2 million, 30 million, and they are not monetizing that audience. They don't know how to create something that solves the problems that their audience has. And so they are not making any money. They're still broke as a joke. Can't buy a Coke. Audience numbers do not translate to dollars. In order to monetize a social media audience, you have to know how to activate them. You have to be able to get them engaged and you have to be able to sell to them without feeling like a sleaze or a pest. Even if you're not looking to make money from your social media content, you're just looking to like maybe get more people into your classes and you haven't been able to get them to act. Your number of social media followers doesn't matter if you don't have the right social media followers and you don't know how to get them to do what you're asking them to do. Sometimes we get really confused on this because we hear statistics like two to 5% of your total audience is ready to buy from you right now. And we think if we just had a bigger audience, then 2% of a bigger audience is a bigger number. That's not the case. If we aren't intentionally moving our people from blue to yellow to orange to red, they aren't going to get there on their own. So you have to serve your perfect future buyers with intention. Lead them through a process of engaging with you. And here's the first step. Let them get to know you by sticking to intentional content pillars. When we think about posting on social 
and we know we're not going to post any more about the offer, the big question is, what do we talk about? I'd like to give you a structure that you can kind of hang your social media content on in the form of content pillars. So this is kind of the skeleton for your social media strategy. These are your pillars. They're the bones that you're going to lay your social media strategy on. And you can also think of them as a litmus test because I'm going to give you four kind of general ideas questions that you can answer for yourself. And then if you were to take any specific piece of content and lay it against that litmus test, you'll know whether or not this piece of social media works for you. So the four pillars are going to be different for each person and they can help the viewer to understand who you are and what you stand for. They may even serve to give a sample of what it might look like to work with you. What I'm going to outline is the basis for your pillars. You're going to flesh this out on your own. So let me give you an example. The first pillar. The first pillar involves using content to lead people toward your program. If you can't post about the offer, how do they know what you do? What other ways will lead them from blue to yellow to orange to red? Can I lead them to the bonfire and get them hot? So this would include information that is relevant to your program and relevant to your audience. Things like socials, like um, market data, things like little videos that you took during your workout or during a session with your clients, um, playlists, letting them know where your class is going to be held, where you're going to be speaking next. So scheduling things information related to pain points that your audience has, pain points related to the result that your program gets them. So you're not telling them about the program and you're not offering them a registration link or telling them where to sign up. What you are doing is solving the pain points in light ways around what you do. You're getting them some quick wins and giving them information that is relevant to your program. We're not making offers. The second content pillar for you then is going to be around solving pain points for your ideal clients. So when you know who your ideal audience is, if you know who you want to be selling to and you know what their pain points are, then you can start talking about those pain points, maybe talking about what happens when you don't solve those specific pain points and talking about specific little ways that they could move toward solving those pain points. For me, this looks like this. I serve fitness instructors, personal trainers, health and wellness coaches, um, people who are working directly with clients to improve their health. And one of their major pain points is always around social media, just like what we're talking about today. So every time I create content that helps them with their social media, helps you guys with your social media, it actually is very on brand for me. It positions me as the expert and it helps you to understand that I have more for you and that I can help you get to where you want to go. And that's what we're looking for. The third content pillar should be around taking a stand. So you're taking a stand about something or a select set of some things, something that shows your audience what you're all about. And it'll show the people that are not for you what you're all about as well. So some people will call this creating divisive content. It's like if you are a vegan chef or you teach vegan cooking or you teach veganism, you're going to talk about veganism and people who are carnivores are not going to come in closer and closer to your campfire, your bonfire. And that's a good thing. So you post about not eating meat and that's not for everybody. And you're taking a stand and saying, this is what I stand for. This is what I'm all about. It's going to help your non-ideal clients to the door. And it's going to help your ideal clients to understand that you are the right person for them to work with. The last content pillar then should be 
around calling your audience to their highest self. I love this one so much. This is my favorite type of content to create. It's around the idea that you're meeting your audience where they are currently and helping them to understand and believe that they've got it within them to achieve the results that you promise. It's talking only to the people who woke up this morning saying, I have this specific problem and I have to solve it right now. And you meet them at that level and you inspire them to more. This is mindset content related to your result. This is testimonials before and afters, showing transformations. This helps people to understand that it is possible. You are facilitating and encouraging through content, calling them to them high, their highest selves. Okay, so that's the four content pillars. These are suggestions for you, and those are rough outlines of what the content pillar should be about. What you should do after this episode then is take a look at those and start to write out what that would look like specifically for you. All right, so We've covered two strategies so far. We've got three more. Strategy number three is very simple, and it is this. Collect email addresses and phone numbers at every chance. It's super important. I know we're talking about social media here, but I need you to remember you don't own your social media audience. The platform owns your audience. The only thing that you own about your audience is the phone number and the email address if you've collected them. Advertising a business on social media will get more and more expensive over time. We will not be able to continue to be individuals just trying to speak to individuals about our business forever. Social media gets more and more adept every day at discerning when you're talking about a business offer and it will become more expensive. And I'm going to give you another example of why this is super important. So on my birthday this year, I made a big mistake. Now, I'm really good about not using my personal profile for posting anything, including anything about my business, because I know how important it is to separate personal from business in terms of social media. You don't want your personal profile to be attached to anything outside of your business. If you make a mistake on your personal profile, it can affect your ability to post for your business. So I encourage anyone that is conducting business on social media to stop using their personal profile. You have to start becoming less of a consumer of social media and more of a creator of social media. So I don't post on my personal profile, but on my birthday... My husband posted this really nice happy birthday post for me, and um, he put a picture of me. So I've been trying to learn how to do a headstand on my paddleboard, and I've been working on it for a while. And um, the night before my birthday, I did the headstand on my paddleboard. And with my birthday post, he posted this picture of me in a bikini doing a headstand on a paddleboard. And um, I turned 49 this year. So a picture of me in my bikini is not really social media ready. (laughs) And I appreciated that he was proud of me, but I also um, put a little threat in the, in the comments that was construed by Facebook as being bullying or hate speech. And I lost the ability to go live in my business pages as well as in my personal pages for six full weeks, six full weeks, lost the ability to post. If I had not been building an email list and really nurturing that list for a long time, my business would have been dead in the water for six weeks. But luckily I did have an email list and I was able to keep things going. So this is just one reason why it is really super important to understand that you do not own your social media audience and that you need to be collecting alternate ways to contact them. Another example of this would be a year or so ago when Facebook went dead for a day and a lot of people were afraid that it was never coming back. People were flipping out a little bit. Um, If it didn't come back, a lot of people had very large audiences that they weren't sure what they were going to do to contact. So you need to make sure you're collecting email addresses and phone numbers. 
a few ways to gather email addresses. If you've got a Facebook group, it's very easy to make that group private. And then when you do make it private, you're able to ask questions of the people that are joining the group. One of those questions should be, what is your email address? And it should be a required question. So that's really easy and simple. Number two, you can create a lead magnet. So a lead magnet is something easy and quick that you might create. Maybe it's a um, checklist, a grocery store guide, a quick video lesson, whatever it is. And you send something out to your social media audience saying, I've created this thing. Do you want it? In order for them to get it, they need to give you their email address because you're going to email it to them. So that is in a nutshell, what a lead magnet is. You're going to email it to them when they give you their email address. Same thing with events, y'all. That's my number three strategy for gathering email addresses is make sure that whenever you do any kind of event that you're getting registrations. So if it's a free live workout or a webinar or a talk, anything that you do, let people register. And part of that registration is the email address. All right. So the last tactic I have got for you today is to be sure that you always follow up. I use direct messages for follow-up. I use email for follow-up. I use SMS texting for follow-up. Social media platforms like it when you're engaging with the people in your audience through direct message. So it gives you some capital with the platforms and also puts you in direct relationship and contact with your audience members. You'll get more people seeing your posts because of that kind of street cred that you get with the platforms. Your platform will show your posts to more people and those posts will be more impactful because more people are interacting and you're interacting directly with your people. It can also help with your daily client acquisition strategies. So if you are currently relying solely on marketing events in order to bring people into your your program, you can now start to have day-to-day conversations with audience members and, and do daily client acquisition. Anything that you do to make sales between marketing events is really going to extend your business even further. So follow up with people who interact with you. It's right for your business. It's right for your relationships and it's right for your audience. All right, so let's bring this all to a conclusion. At the top of the show today, the first thing we talked about was the bank of social capital, the idea that anytime you communicate with your audience, you are either creating a deposit or a withdrawal and that when you add value and give your audience what they want, that you are creating a deposit and that when you ask for something that you're creating a withdrawal. And then we started piling metaphors on top of metaphors. So we started talking about the bonfire and the different colors of your audience and how warm they are. And we talked about the fact that your red audience is the only audience that it's appropriate to create, to um, make an offer to. And because they're the only ones that can smell what you're cooking. They're close enough to your bonfire to smell what you are cooking, especially if that's a high ticket offer. Those are the only people that it is appropriate to make an offer to. We talked about how you do serve your audience and that most of your social audience is going to be blue or yellow. And that is where you want to kind of keep your content. And you do that by creating content pillars that make sense to that audience content pillars, I give you four suggestions for the pillars and four kind of overarching ideas that you can build your content pillars around. We talked about adding value for the right people. We talked about being intentional with our social media, and we talked about collecting email addresses and SMS phone numbers so that we can email and text our audience. All right, so I would love to hear your thoughts. Please contribute your comments. Please give me your questions. I will come back and answer them. All right, one more thing. I want you to walk away from this, digest it a little bit, but I want you to come back and watch again. This episode is so full of really useful stuff that you need for your social media content 
for your strategy, for your thinking about social media, for your sales process, taking some from someone from being completely cold, being blue, all the way over to being sold. And I think that it's worth reviewing this content more than once. So I want you to come back and watch again. If you didn't get to take notes while you were watching or listening today, I want you to go ahead and take notes on the second time, or I want you to follow along with your notes and maybe review them and do them over again a second time. Come back, review this content because it is super useful and this is all free for your benefit so that you can grow the right audience and grow your business in a way that leads to your happy ending. So with that, I will see you next week. I love you and I'll see you soon. So before I go, I just want to make sure that you know about my free Facebook group that's for instructors, trainers, coaches, anybody who's working directly with clients in order to improve their health or their fitness. It's called Grow Your Fitness Business for Instructors, Trainers, and Coaches, and it's on Facebook. It's completely free. Just get in there, answer the questions, and you are in. You can network, train, I give support, and I do a live Q&A on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock where we will talk and dig into the content from today's episode. So get in there and get in that live training on Wednesday, 2 o'clock, Eastern, where we are going to dig in and really study and onboard the information from today's episode. I will see you there. I really hope this information served you today. And if it did, will you do me a favor? Leave a comment letting me know how you felt about the information I shared or asking any questions that you may have been left with. I will see your comments and I will respond. Your questions and reactions help me to know what content helps you grow most. Please make sure that you like this episode on YouTube and that you share it with a friend who might find it useful. Subscribe to this channel and click the bell so you will always be notified every time I publish something new. Your likes help us to get the show in the hands of pros and coaches just like you. And one more thing before we go, if you are ready for the next level of support and growth with me, I invite you to take my client creation kickstart. It's a wealth of learning, coaching, and support contained in a mini course that you can complete in just a few days in your spare time. If you show up and do the work, I will show you how to gain five or more clients in the span of just a few days. I've had Kickstarters leave that mini course having made $5,000 in just a couple days. Even better, your registration includes a one-on-one custom next steps call so we can ensure you can complete the course and are prepared to take the right next steps based on your unique business. It's under 50 bucks right now, but that price is not going to last. So head over to fitprosconnect.com. That's F-I-T-P-R-O-S connect.com slash kickstart and get registered before the price goes up. fitprosconnect.com slash kickstart and I will see you in our custom next steps meeting.